What is going on Raider Nation today? We're going to break down the Raiders offense, really focus in on some of the plays, break down some of the miscommunication, some of the positive things that we saw on tape. Let's get right into it. This first play right here. Uh, first and foremost, really solid pocket in my opinion right here. And the pass is going to fall way incomplete. You know, it's kind of hard. You can't really tell where the ball lands. Uh, we'll break it down. Um, the ball actually falls way out here towards the 10 yard line, which is crazy because Hollins runs his route towards the 25 yard line. So that tells me there's a little bit of miscommunication right off the bat. This is the game's first play. They're going to take a deep shot. I love the concept, right? I love the fact that we're going to take a deep shot, but you guys can tell that Hollins runs his route maybe too shallow, and that could be because of the way the safety is opening up his hips, right? The safety's kind of turning to the outside. Maybe he's ready to run this way. Do note that a lot of NFL offenses have different route concepts, depending on what the safety or the corner may do in terms of leverage. Because Derek Carr throws this pass as if Hollins is running a deep post. And that's obviously not the case. And you guys will see it from the end zone angle. You'll see that the ball lands at about the 10 yard line uh, way off. You know, uh, it's kind of interesting because week 10, week 11, and the Raiders are still having these issues. You know, one of the things that we've heard a lot about is that not everybody is buying into the system. Not everybody's giving it their effort. And I'm not saying Mac Hollins is one of those guys, but for some reason, something tells me Mac Hollins is one of the guys. I don't know. Pure speculation. Uh, maybe Hollins read this wrong. Maybe he did not. Uh, you know, I also saw some people talk about this play a little bit, specifically the offensive line. And I'm not sure what more people would expect, right? I think this is a very clean pocket. There's no pressure from the inside. In fact, Derek Carr, if he really wants to, can step all the way up here to the left absolute no pressure and he's able to throw this pass deep right just because it's a tight pocket just because there might be guys around doesn't mean it's a bad pocket that was a really good pocket in my opinion um, you guys can see the pass it's gonna land here's the ball it's gonna land way out here towards the 10 yard line um there it is it hit right there i think that's about the 14 yard line so again miscommunication not sure why that was the first play of the game but let's go ahead and jump forward there's a lot of plays that i want to share with you guys Alrighty guys, let's go get into the second play of the game. Do know we're going to not go one, two, three, four, five in terms of plays. We're going to skip a lot of plays, but I do want to show you guys something new that the Raiders do not do. Uh, this is going to be a toss play to the left. And if you guys have watched any of my offensive breakdowns, if you guys, you guys have watched any of my past videos, you guys know that the, when the Raiders run this crack toss play right here, they don't have their tight end in here. Right, you guys can see that the uh, tight end here blocks down. Foster Moreau is going to block down. Generally speaking, when the Raiders run this toss play where they get the tackle to pull, they have their tight end standing up right here. And generally speaking, that guy blocks down, but he's not in a three point stance as Foster Moreau is, right? They're usually standing up. So do note this is something different. We're going to see this play run like this as opposed to that guy standing up. Um, and in my opinion, the reason why that's happening is because the Jaguars last week absolutely crushed us. Trayvon Walker, Arden Key, Josh Allen. Um, when the guy was coming down in motion and standing right here, guys would see that. And they were not falling for it, right? They were seeing these crack toss plays. In this case, the crack part of it has been taken out. Uh, so just note, right? Same play, just a little bit different in terms of the blocking angles and kind of where you're having guys line up. Um, this play should have hit for more yards. Uh, Colton Miller is really, really struggling. He's going to get out in space. He should be able to block number 58. All right, super simple block, and he misses. At the same time, 45 has to kind of take him because Colton Miller misses, and you see the one guy here is going to make the play. Uh, here's the thing with this play, right? If uh, Colton Miller here blocks 58, or if he just lets 58 go, right? Because I don't know if 58 is his guy. Truth be told, I think the first guy here... Um, would generally be the left tackle or the guy that's pulling first, but Colt Miller could also go up to this next guy, right? Now, Colt Miller doesn't know if 45 is going to pick him up or not, uh, but imagine if Miller picks up 58 and then 45 gets up to the safety, right? There's literally no one else there. The next guy that would be able to tackle Josh Jacobs is blocked here. The guy doesn't really have a shot, but the only other guy is the backside safety. So the Raiders are looking at a massive play had Colt and Miller just blocked this correctly. Miller's been really, really struggling. You know, it's it's crazy. Uh, Colt Miller has to play better. And it's not just run blocking. The guy's been really bad in pass protection. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, Andre James has a very difficult reach block on the two-eye technique defensive tackle. I think his name is Grover, Stuart Grover. 
absolute stud in my opinion. I don't know where he came from. Uh, that's a difficult block for James, but he does a good enough job where that guy's not going to be able to make the play, right? Um, yeah, he gets close, but keep in mind, this is an outside play. That's all you can expect from a center who has a difficult reach on the 2i. And then Dylan Parham's going to reach to his left and get up to the next level. Just a toss play, right? Uh, crack, toss, toss, whatever you guys want to call it. It's really the same thing. Uh, besides, you bring the tight end in this time. Let's go ahead and jump forward and get into the next rep. All right, guys, jumping forward into the next play. If you guys watched my video about two or three days ago on Derek Carr, you guys have already seen this play. First and 25, Derek Carr is going to end up getting sacked. Um, the Raiders have a deep dagger concept drawn up, up to Devontae Adams. You guys can see Adams lined up here. He's going to run a super deep dig route. Uh, and then these two guys are basically going to clear out. And Derek Carr is going to get sacked. Now, here's the thing. The offense line does a pretty good job, but Derek Carr is just not able to step up. Um, I think we've talked about this play before in the past, at least on this channel we have. I know a lot of people talked about this on Twitter. Um, even some of the bigger accounts, right? The guys that watch football actually showed this play. It was more to show Dylan Parham, who gets uh, bull rushed by uh, the defensive tackle there, Grover. Um, he's not able to anchor down. He really just gets pushed back. But that's actually not that bad, like technically speaking, right? And do understand that uh, there are plays, right? I remember a play a little while ago where Cam Jurgens, the center for the Eagles, got pushed back by Jordan Davis, right? Uh, so the rookie center got pushed back by the rookie defensive tackle, and this trended. People were like, oh, look at Jordan Davis. Um, the center couldn't stop him, and he absolutely crushed him. Um, but a lot of former NFL players, a lot of guys that break down offense line tape, said that that should have been long enough theoretically for the quarterback to throw the football, right? And I almost feel like the same thing could be said true for this, right? If this was a shorter concept, that's a good job. Now, I do understand he has to get stronger and he has to anchor down, right? It's not good in terms of the play call, uh, but it's not so terrible, right? I just want to point that out. Um, and here's the issue with, with Derek Carr, right? You have a massive... I mean, this is like, um, there's probably like four to five yards right there between Parham and Jermaine Illuminar. And Derek Carr has to step up. Um, I get it, right? His vision is to the left. He's looking downfield to the left. But you got to feel pressure, right? You got to be able to feel it more. You have to realize that Parham's getting pushed back into you. And you may need to break to your right or to your left. At least look, right? Because right now, Devontae Adams is not open. We can go back to the other angle. Um, Derek Carr is looking right now at Devontae Adams. He's not even close to being out of his break. And keep in mind, this play is solely designed as Devontae Adams being the number one target. Number two would be one of these checkdowns. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. It's not going to go to any of these other two guys, right? These two guys are just the influence routes. They're just the guys that are going to clear it out. You got to step up, Derek Carr. We're not going to spend too much time on this play. We're going to go ahead and just get into the next play, but um, you got to step up, right? You got to move. You got to get to the pocket. I've mentioned this on Twitter. I've had offensive linemen literally tell me that Derek Carr does not do a good job. He doesn't help his offensive line out. He doesn't do a good job moving and you look at guys like Josh Allen and Patrick Holmes. This is what these guys told me. And Derek Carr doesn't do a good job in terms of actually being able to step up and helping his offensive line out. Because this sack right here is not on Dylan Parham. All right, this sack is on Derek Carr. This is a quarterback sack because the quarterback can't move. All right, very, very bad job. Don't like the fact that he, before he even gets sacked, just grabs onto the ball and just takes the sack. Like, instead of trying to do something... The guy just grabs onto the football and just runs into his, he runs into the sack, right? Again, got to do a better job, but let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Watch this double team block by Andre James and Dylan Parham on DeForest Buckner. This is a five yard run. Look at that, man. They get this guy turned around. That is not the position you want to be. If you're a defensive lineman, you got to hold your ground and look at him just getting absolutely crushed. I get it. It's a double team block, but... Damn, you got to not get crushed like that. I mean, look at the position he's in. His back is absolutely turned. That's a great job by Andre James and Dylan Parham. You know, I saw on social media recently that the Raiders offense line isn't very good. That Josh Jacobs makes them look better. And part that is partly true. But the Raiders are top 10 in their run block win rate. They're top 10 in their pass block win rate and, and the pass block might not be top 10 it might be top 15 but in terms of their run blocking they're they're a top 10 unit it's because of plays like this 
All right, like Josh Jacobs doesn't have to do anything other than just hit the hole, run right into the gap, find the lane and make make a play, right? He literally just runs forward and, and ends up getting the yard, right? He gets five yards on this play. And this is five yards that the offensive line created, All right? This is not five yards that Josh Jacobs created. This is the five yards that the offensive line created. I mean, it really starts with that double team block, that power concept right here, right? You get the double and then one gets up to the linebacker. Although in this case, neither of them actually get up to the linebacker uh, because they're pushing a guy back so far, uh, which is a thing, right? If you push a guy back four or five yards, you don't necessarily have to get off your block. Uh, really nice job right there. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. All right, you guys, let's jump forward. This is the fourth and two. This is the play that we're going to run this toss play here to Josh Jacobs. It ends up getting stopped. Uh, I want to break this play down because a lot of people killed Josh Jacobs. I'm sorry, a lot of people killed Josh McDaniels for running this play, but the play was actually a really nice design. Now, uh, this is a true crack toss. Remember the very first or second play that we broke down? Uh, you get the down block here and then you get Colton Miller to pull. Last time, Foster Moreau was in a three point stance. This time, you got the receiver on a two point stance. He's going to block down, which is a great job because he has the angle. And he does a good job actually shutting it down. You get Colton Miller out in a one-on-one -on -one situation. I expect Colton Miller to win. And generally speaking, you know, he does push his guy out. Obviously, the guy kind of makes the play, but uh, that's primarily because of Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams does not make his block. Now, uh, it's ridiculous, in my opinion, that people, when I posted on social media, right, right after this play happened during the game, that Devontae Adams misses his block, people literally made an excuse for Devontae Adams. And it is ridiculous ridiculous how some people really think it is okay just because you're a superstar wide receiver for you not to have to block think about how ridiculous that is honestly it's just stupid right let's just be honest um receiver uh, running back fullback if you don't even quarterback right at certain times if you don't you know if you can make a block or if your play if you're in the play and it's a run to your side you're making the block if Devontae Adams blocks this guy and shuts this guy down right here, there's going to be enough space because Adams has this guy stopped here. Hollins has the DN stopped here. Colton Miller will make, make contact with the with the uh, corner and the corner is going to take the outside, right? He has outside containment on this play. So you're going to have a lane from basically where Colton Miller makes contact to where Devontae Adams. So you got about three to five yards and everyone's blocked, right? This play would work. And it's ridiculous because people talked shit about Josh McDaniels on social media. And that makes zero sense to me because this play right here should have worked if Devontae Adams made his block. Um, again, people made the excuse that Adams, you know, throw him the football. Why are you having him block? And I, I just found it ridiculous. So, so I just wanted to show you guys this play. You guys can watch it from the end zone angle. Uh, and then we'll kind of get into it again. Uh, you're going to see that Andre James has the reach here. Um, two eye technique defensive tackle. Not an easy block, right? Not an easy block. Parham obviously helps him a little bit more in this instance. Um, there it is, kind of pushes him, hits him in the hip. Uh, so that's a nice job. And then he gets up to the linebacker. Great job by Parham. Um, and then, of course, the crack block here. He does an okay job. And then on the backside, it's just a backside block. Uh, but yeah, his play would have hit if, if Devontae Adams made his block. Just wanted to point it out because we are kind of doing a Raiders versus Colts offensive breakdown, right? Just watch a bunch of different plays. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward and get into the next rep. All right, guys, let's jump into this next play. As you guys know, I'm a, I'm a major fan of Josh Jacobs, um, but I'm also critical of him, right? One of the criticisms I have is his speed, right? He's not very quick. He's not very explosive. He's really a one-cut power back, right? He's really an in-between-the-tackles back. Uh, this play right here, right, if I just back this up, if I showed you guys this freeze frame, you're going to assume that Josh Jacobs picks up like, you know, at least three to five yards, right, based off of what you see here. Even then, if uh, Josh Jacobs is able to get through this gap and hit the outside, there's a chance he can pick up 10, 15 yards. Uh, but this play goes for a grand total of one yard because Josh is not very quick, in my opinion. He's not very explosive. And don't get me wrong, he's a good running back. But... You look at this play right here, and I think the O-line did a pretty good job. Now, uh, I think Josh made the mistake of cutting to the outside here and try to run past this when his fullback is right here, right? Follow your fullback going into uh, that area. Now, I get it. Maybe he's trying to make more yards out of a play, um, but you hit it to the inside here, and you're picking up 
at least three to five yards, maybe more if you squeeze through that gap. But of course, as you guys see, he's going to try cutting it and he gets tackled by DeForest Buckner. O-line did a pretty decent job in my opinion. Obviously, Buckner makes the play, but keep in mind, if you guys watch the right guard on, on this play, right? If you look at the right guard's footwork and the way he takes the uh, right step back and the left step forward, right? You see the way he's angling his feet this way. See how he's his butt is facing basically the inside here uh, that means josh that that means the run is to the inside here right and you can tell that also because not only is this guy blocking this way uh, but then your center's blocking to his right uh parm's blocking out this way colt miller's jumping up into the inside of 58 i think josh just read this play wrong and this play should have went for more yards um, again i love josh jacobs right but i think this could be one of the reasons why the raiders move on from him you look at the best running teams in the in the nfl right now um and generally speaking it's the guy it's the teams with the best offensive lines um the eagles right average like five yards per carry the browns or they have the two best offense line coaches to the best offensive schemes even the patriots are switching running backs every other year and all of those running backs are having success um, the power scheme really allows you to have success right it really does and the raiders do a good job and I think that is why they're going to move on from Josh Jacobs. You know, I, again, I, I think it's going to happen. We'll see what ends up happening. Um, not a major deal, right? Uh, we lost this game regardless. The game is already over. But I do want to just point these type of plays out. Although I think Alex Bars has been absolute terrible, this play is not Alex Bars' fault. Although the play only gains one yard, right? Um, just want to point that out. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. You know, when people say Josh McDaniels is not a good play designer he's not good in terms of the way he runs his offense it's it's crazy to me because i think he does a really good job this play right here really sums up some of what he can do 22 yards by josh jacobs and you guys might not think about like the blocking concept and stuff like that uh, but i do right i look at every individual player and just to kind of note something right uh kind of looking at foster Moore, look at how his body's angle look at how his uh, feet are kind of angled right he's almost making it seem like he's going to try to go to the inside or he's going to try to potentially uh, come downwards right based off of how he, he's kind of angled and i believe that's done on purpose at the same time you bring in an extra offensive lineman you put him to the right uh, you're going to get your left guard which is dylan parham and you're going to pull him to the right right everything you're doing is indicating it's a run to the right at the same time your fullback comes out to the right uh, Josh Jacobs, right, is going to step to the right. You see that step, that first step? And he's going to actually go to his left. And Derek's going to pitch it to him. You look at the flow of every single one of these linebackers, it's going to be towards the bottom of your screen. That right there is designed. This play is 100% designed. All right, Josh Jacobs doesn't make someone miss in the backfield. All right, Josh Jacobs literally doesn't get touched on this play until I don't even know when, right? Like the first contact is... 18 yards downfield this is a really really nice job in terms of the design and there's a lot of plays like this on tape right i think one of the issues that happens is a lot of people don't watch the tape and actually um, watch the individuals and watch the angles that guys are taking and think about what the offense is trying to do and what ends up happening right sometimes people see like that uh, play where Devontae adams uh, missed the block and they'll just say that's a shitty play call Never mind the fact that Devontae Adams has happened to miss his block, right? Every block should theoretically score, or every play should theoretically score a touchdown, right? That, that's how every play is blocked. Assuming you can make one guy miss, assuming the guy with the ball carrier, or the, the ball carrier in general, can make one guy miss, right? Every play, if that one guy misses, should theoretically be a touchdown, right? Of course, unless you box it in the way they do here. Um, but again, really, really nice play design. Absolutely love it. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Check this play out. It's a power run to your left. You're going to get the right guard to pull, uh, which means Andre James is going to cover the right guard that's pulling. And watch the block by Andre James. He's going to shock this defensive tackle and absolutely move him. Let me slow that down so you guys can watch. This is a really, really nice job. Great leverage. James makes contact perfectly. Uh, he's going to hit 90 right into his chest. And look at that. Look at number 90 get absolute moved. He gets lifted and moved, right? Uh, number 90 is going to the to the left of your screen, right? Or, or to the left in general. But uh, number 90 is going to his left, and bam, he gets moved back to his right. That's that's a nice play right there. A great job by Arnold James. 
great job at the double team on the Forest Buckner. One of the things I, I noticed as I watched all these run plays is they doubled him a lot, right? Keep in mind, we run the power scheme, so we're going to have a lot of these double team blocks. But look at this double team, and look at that movement that they're creating right there. Look at that, man. DeForest Buckner's on his knee, right? That, that's what the Raiders had him doing. Like, they're literally going right at him. Um, and I think that was one of their game plans because I didn't really hear much about him, right, that he was having success or, or whatnot, right? A uh, really nice job. Uh, here, you got a out, a out block by Foster Moreau. Everyone's just kind of getting up in there. Uh, here comes the pull. And this is a good job by Josh not to try cutting it right or cutting it left and just getting underneath or right into the back of his offensive line and just going forward, right? So it's a good job right there by Josh Jacobs going into the next rep. Absolutely love this play design right here. Uh, Colt Miller struggles. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. I had mentioned it earlier. He's really struggling with anchoring down. I watched Devontae Adams watch the route. Absolute beautiful, man. Uh, you're going to put a linebacker on Adams. This is what you're going to get. <laughs> Stems it outside, quickly comes back to the inside. Um, kind of late, but I think that's because Carr gets pressured and he has to roll through his right. Um, that's that's beautiful right there, man. Absolute beautiful. Uh, that's Devontae Adams for you, man. Cannot cover a guy like Adams. Uh, let's get into the end zone angle here. Uh, watch Miller. He's going to really struggle here with 54. Um, you got to anchor now, man. Uh, Colt Miller still struggles with the anchor. It's just a really, really poor job. And the thing is, is you can look at every Colt Miller pass block and like 60% of them are him not being able to anchor. It's not all pressure, right? Uh, but a lot of them, he's not able to anchor, right? His like feet are slipping. He's not able to drop those hips and anchor. He just, he really struggles. Uh, look at Jermaine Illuminor on the other side, right? Watch Illuminor and watch Illuminor anchor now, right? That's how you do it right there. That's a really, really nice job by Jermaine Illuminor. And it's ridiculous to me that Raider fans want to get rid of this guy. And they want Thayer Munford to come in. Honestly, you can make the argument that right now, our right tackle is better than our left tackle. Like 100%, that argument could be made. I'm not saying he's going to be better. I'm not saying that he has the higher upside. Although, uh, technically, he's still only 27 years old, right? Like, Jermaine Illuminor is not absolutely like super old by any means, right? Um, and he's he's been pretty stout. Like, you know, it's crazy because he's had some penalties, right? And he, he even had a penalty this last uh, game against the Colts, which I, I thought it was a terrible penalty. But he still had a penalty against the Colts. But Jermaine Illuminor has been an absolute stud for the Raiders. An argument could be made he's been our best offensive lineman. And people want Thayer Munford to come in. And, you know, when I hear, like, when I hear other people talk about Thayer Munford and that Thayer Munford should start or he should come in, Illuminor's trash that gives it away that those guys do not study the actual offensive line and they don't study every single rep right um because Jermaine Illuminor has been very good for the Raiders in my opinion uh Colt Miller's the one that's been really struggling and Alex Barris has been really struggling over the past two weeks specifically um, but with that being said let's go ahead and get to the next rep I don't know why the Raiders don't do this more just one-on-one -on -one football uh spread it out right and then just throw it to Devontae Adams. I mean, look at how great of a route runner he is. Very similar to the last play. Um, holding should have been called the hold, but not that it matters. It was the first down regardless. But, like, damn, look at Devontae Adams. Uh, stems. I mean, I don't even know if that's really a stem. I mean, he just takes this guy straight up, uh, gives himself the two-way go, and just jukes a guy. Like, that's like one-on-one -on -one basketball almost, right? Um, absolutely crushes that guy. I think that's a linebacker. 58, I think, is the number. Um, and they're bracketing him, right? It's a terrible bracket because uh, the linebacker is almost trying to take both ways. When there's a guy to the outside, like he should have been way more towards the inside. But the Raiders got to just do this more often. Like flat out, just throw it to Devontae Adams. But put him to the inside and let him go one-on-one, -on -one, right? Let him find the area that's open. Let him find that gap. Um, you know, I don't know. So the Raiders got to do a better job getting Devontae Adams the ball and really just, just getting him the football, right? Um, really nice job on that play. I like the design concept because we did this a lot where we put Devontae Adams and just let him do his one-on-one -on -one stuff. So good job right there. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. If you guys are still watching up to this point, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to give one of you guys a jersey. Shout out to you guys. All you got to say is, hey, bro, I watched up to the point. Big shout out to you. Something like that. Um, I'm going to give one of you guys a jersey. 
check this play out right here. I don't know if you guys remember. I think it was week one. The Raiders gave Devontae Adams. It actually was not week one. I was against the Saints. Uh, the Raiders gave Devontae Adams a end around. I think it was on third down, third and short. And then Colt Miller got blown up, right? He didn't cut block. Instead, he tried to block uh, Marcus Davenport straight up. Instead of cutting him, he just blocked him outwards, and uh, the guy blew the play. I, I think he, he didn't cut block on that play specifically. Uh, on this play, he cut blocks. You know, if you're going to get a guy to go in motion pre-snap eight times a game and you don't hand it to him at all, teams aren't going to fall for the motion. All right, you got to hand him the football. So I like the fact that the Raiders hand him the football. Obviously, you get penalized because apparently Colton Miller tripped the guy, which I don't even see how you can come to the conclusion that he tripped the guy being on his, you know, I, I get it, I guess, whatever. But, um, you know, I, I do like the fact that Miller cuts here. I, I think he learned from that Saints game where he did not cut. And Davenport already had the outside edge. Um, obviously, this plays different. The guy's in a three-point stance as opposed to standing up in a two-point stance, right? Kind of like how the safety is right here, corner, whatever this guy is. Uh, because then you can kind of see that the motion's coming. Uh, so this play makes more sense in this aspect uh, because this guy can't really see the motion. All right. Uh, and I like the fact that he blocks here. He cut blocks and then watch Devontae Adams kill this linebacker right here. Uh, when the flag came, I thought this penalty was on Adams. Uh, that, in my opinion, I don't know how that's not a blind side block. Uh, you're not allowed to put your shoulder pad into a guy. Um, I, again, I, I saw the penalty. It's crazy because Adams went nuts on this referee. Look at this guy. Look, look at him. He, he runs to the referee and he straight chews him out. You might be able to see it from the other angle more, but... Uh, this play does not, uh, this play comes back obviously, right? Uh, but again, I like the design, right? It's, it would have been a six yard gain. Great heads up play by, the, uh, uh, Adams here. Um, because Adams sees this linebacker is going to blow the play up, right? Bam, right there. It's a nice job. Hollins makes the first guy miss. And what is that? Like a eight, nine yard gain relative to the sticks. Uh, so it was, a, it was a good play. Obviously it just ended up being because Colton Miller cut blocks. Um, or he uh, trips, right? Um, yeah, then you guys see the penalty, but just wanted to break that play down a little bit, talk about it. Let's get into the next rep. All right, check this play out right here. You're going to have a play action, quick throw right here to Foster Moreau. He's coming on a crossing pattern. Uh, the play action gets the linebacker sucked in. Foster Moreau comes empty. Derek Carr, man, steps into the pocket. Uh, with the guy coming right at him, he takes a big hit and he delivers the throw. Really, really, really nice shot by Derek Carr. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I, I see what happened, right? Uh, Dylan Parham's going to pull Andre James has to block out and they're going to run a defensive line game at the same time. So although he kind of gets out here, um, number 90 is going into Colton. So Colton has to take number 90 and then Ngakwe is going to come back around. And technically I think there might be some sort of man, man on man. Um, because of the pull, so Andre has to stick to his guy, and then Colton has to stick to Ngakwe, but Ngakwe comes and smacks Derek. L luckily, Derek's able to get the ball out right there. It's a good job by Derek Carr to feel that, get the ball out. A uh, really nice job. Let's go and get to the next rep. You know, I see all the great teams out there. You know, I watch a lot of the really good teams out there, the really good offenses, um, and they run this play right here every game, right? Every game. Uh, in the red zone, right? This is obviously a two-point conversion. But in the red zone, great teams run this play, right? Um, obviously, it's a different motion potentially, right? Obviously, in this play here, Devontae goes from the inside to the outside. Uh, other times, a guy will be on the outside and he'll come in. Uh, basically, the concept's the same, right? Is you're going to have two guys basically block, and then you're going to quickly throw to the other guy underneath him, and he's going to kind of just find a gap, right? Um, but for some reason, the Raiders just can't execute these plays. Uh, they ran it, obviously, today. Um, they ran it, I think, about three weeks ago. They ran it once as well, and they did not execute that one. And then they ran it, I think, two other times this season. And the only one that was executed was the first one. I think it was against the Chargers that we ran this play. And I think it was to Devontae Adams as well. Um, I think we scored a touchdown on it. But such a simple-ass concept, and the Raiders can't, like, execute it, right? Um Derek throws this too far to the inside, in my opinion, All right? You can see that Devontae's reaching with those hands. He should not have to reach. The ball should hit him right into the chest, right? Right now, the ball should be in his chest or at least going towards his chest, 
not way far to the inside. Um, I doubt Josh McDaniels is telling him throw it all the way to the inside and have Adams catch it. Um, you know, again, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why these plays don't work for the Raiders, but they work for all the other good teams in the league, right? Or teams generally speaking. Um, Two-point conversion, the Raiders needed it. Um, I guess, yeah, they needed it to go up by three points. Um, 20 to 19, we're up, but uh, this play sucked. Let's go and get to the next rep. All right, you guys, the final play of the game, 25 to 20 is the score. Fourth and seven, 52 seconds left. Um, let's break this play down a little bit. Let's just talk about it. Uh, the difference with the Raiders being two and seven versus three and six is literally this play. Um, I'm perfectly fine with it, honestly. Uh, if you're going to throw the ball up, you throw it up to your best player, right? 100%. Can't disagree with it. The Colts took their shot. It's crazy to me, in my opinion. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let's just break this play down a little bit from the defense. Um, you guys know that. Uh, Gus Bradley's a defensive coach. So generally speaking, they run a cover three, but in this instance, they're going to play man here. Uh, they're going to actually bring both of these linebackers here. And what they're actually going to do is a little bit unique. They're going to bring this guy off the edge as well. But as he comes off the edge, he's going to just play man to man with the running back. You guys will see that uh, as he kind of blitzes. And then what they do is obviously your man to man here. And then this guy takes the slot receiver, and the safety here is going to come on Foster Moreau. All right, so it'll be a man on one, Foster Moreau. So it's kind of interesting because it's really just a cover zero, but they show it in a way where they're trying to confuse Derek. All right, if Derek, uh, keep in mind, right, he's going to have he's gonna have his hot read, right? Um, earlier, the Colts actually ran this same play, um, and I'll, I'll actually show you guys that play as well. Um, they blitzed both linebackers, right? Uh, they blitzed this guy and this guy. And Derek threw it to Amir Abdullah because he was left uncovered. On this play, they fake that 23 is going to come as well. And really, 23 took away Amir Abdullah. So they're trying to bait Derek Carr into this pass. Uh, Derek Carr obviously made his mind up pre-snap uh, that he's going to go to Devontae. They blitz, so he just took that shot to Devontae. Um, even the slide call, the slide call is going to be to the left. Um, and so basically the offensive line is responsible for, um, the four down D lineman plus the linebacker here. And they, under the assumption that this linebacker is going to cover Amir Abdullah, of course, if he blitzes, the hot would be Amir Abdullah. But as you guys see, number 28, 23, sorry, a took away Abdullah. Um, and Derek throws it to Devontae again. I love the read. I think it's the proper read. Let me show you guys that other play really quickly. All right, here's that other play, a very similar look. You're going to see both linebackers come. Uh, Amir Abdullah is going to be the hot, and Derek's going to throw it to him, right? So it's the same concept, right? They're going to bring both linebackers. Um, this time, number 23 drops, drops back, obviously, but um, it's the same thing, right? They tried doing the same thing to Derek. They were trying to bait him on that final play. We'll go back to that play in just a second. But there it is, man. You got the bait, um, and Derek checks it off to uh, Amir Abdullah. So it's a good read by Derek. Uh, once again, the offensive line, same thing. Everyone's going to slide to their left, um, and they're going to go to this linebacker, so they're going to pick up the five guys uh, with this linebacker, which means this guy's going to go free. Um, and, of course, uh, you're going to see 72 is going to be in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but from right guard down, they're going to all slide to the left. Um, so Jermaine picks up his guy. Obviously, his guy kind of comes to the inside. Uh, but everyone gets picked up here minus that one linebacker. Just backing it up. Uh, this one guy is going to go go free, and Derek checks it off. Of course, right? That That's the point of these plays. Um, and the Colts know it, right? They're not stupid. Every NFL defensive coach understands that um, in a man-to-man -man situation, if you bring more guys than there are guys to block, uh, in this case, 44 has the responsibility of Abdullah. Derek's going to quickly throw it to Abdullah. And that's exactly what he does on this play. Good read by Derek. Um, but then on the final play, they're going to try to to bait him, right? Um, obviously, this time they fake that 23 is going to blitz. But Derek doesn't even look that way, right? Derek has already know He already knows who he's going to go to. Uh, once the safety drops down, he knows he has uh, Devontae in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But I did find it interesting, right? Uh, the Colts did try to get Derek to potentially check it down. Fourth and seven. You only need seven yards. More than enough time. All right, get those seven yards, assuming Abdullah gets out of the backfield, picks uh, the first down up. Uh, and again, Derek didn't fall for it. No, just wanted to point that play out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Way longer than I expected. 
Um, it is Saturday, so I know a lot, a lot of people are gonna, are gonna watch this. But if you guys did, man, leave that comment below, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.